بكت عيني بكت عيني بكت عيني على ذنبي وما لاقيت من كربي فيا ذلي ويا خجلي إذا ما قال لي ربي أما استحييته تعصيني ولا تخشى من العتب الحمد لله All praise is due to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala who created everything in pairs. He is the Rabb of the world and the master of all of our affairs. He demonstrated his power through the perfection of his creation and he manifested his knowledge through the reality of predestination. He created death and life as a trial for us and a test and to separate the pious from the wicked and to select the best. So tabarak Allah, the one to whom belongs all power and majesty. And may salat and salam be upon Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, the Makki and the Hashimi. As to what follows, know that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has commanded us to be conscious of him. When he says in the Quran, Ya ayyuhal ladheena amanu attaqullaha haqqa tuqatih, wa la tamutunna illa wa antum muslimun. Dear Muslims, imagine one day you wake up, and you have an anonymous note that some benefactor has promised to take care of the finances for the rest of your life. You don't have to worry about working. You don't have to worry about bills, about paying your rent. You are guaranteed that you are going to be getting sustenance and rizq until you pass away. Imagine how happy this news would make you how genuinely joyous your heart would be to hear of such good news. In fact, to be happy at blessings is a sign that you recognize those blessings. And as we all know, there is a blessing that is more precious than the money of this world. And that is the blessing of the Quran and the blessing of Islam and the blessing of our Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wasallam. Just like a person would be happy if they were promised this dunya, we should be infinitely more happy when Allah has gifted us the gift that is more precious than this dunya. And that is the gift of Iman, the gift of the Quran, the gift of being in the ummah of our Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wasallam. To feel farah, happiness at these blessings is a sign of Iman. It is a sign of appreciation. It is a sign that you recognize how blessed and fortunate you are that Allah Azza wa Jal has chosen you. Because if Allah had not chosen you, you would not be of this ummah. You would not be of the recipient of the Quran. You would not be in the best ummah that Allah has made for mankind. And you and I would not be of the followers of our Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. So in today's brief khutbah, I want to remind myself and all of you of the theological necessity of the obligation of being happy at being in the ummah of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. It is obligatory. Why is it obligatory? Because if you are not happy at this blessing, then you do not recognize this blessing. If you are not happy that you are a follower of this Nabi, of this Rasul, of the Mustafa and Mujtaba, of the Ahmed and the Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, them, then you have not recognized who that personality is. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says in the Quran, Surah Yunus, قُلْ بِفَضْلِ اللَّهِ وَبِرَحْمَتِهِ فَبِذَلِكَ فَلْيَفْرَحُوا هُوَ خَيْرٌ مِمَّا يَجْمَعُونَ Say to them, Ya Rasulullah, say to them, rejoice and be happy at Allah's blessings and Allah's rahmah, for those two are more better than anything they can acquire of this world. Say, be happy at Allah's fadl and Allah's rahmah. Ibn Abbas said, Allah's fadl is the Quran and Allah's rahmah is the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Allah's fadl is the Quran. Say, bi fadlillah. And Allah's rahmah, wa bi rahmatihi, fa bi thalika fal yafrahu. Let them rejoice. Let them be glad. Let them be happy. For it is better than anything else they can acquire. Rejoice and be happy at the Quran. And rejoice and be happy at the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam being our Prophet. 
Ibn al-Qayyim rahimahullah ta'ala, he comments on this verse and he says, all of the interpretations of the Salaf of the previous scholars, they are around the premise that the fadl of Allah is Islam and the rahmah of Allah is the sunnah of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. So the fadl of Allah is Islam, the Quran, Hidayah, and the rahmah is the Prophet Sallallahu is the sunnah, is the risala. Then Ibn Qayyim says, and depending on how much alive the heart is, depending on the life of the heart, shall be the happiness of the heart. The happier the heart is, the more Iman is in the heart. The more a person is happy at the Quran and at the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, Ibn Qayyim is saying, the happier you are that you have the Quran in your life, the happier you are, you have the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam and you believe in him. This is a sign of Iman in the heart. So much so, in fact, this is straight from the Arabic. Ibn Qayyim says this, Hatta inna al-qalba la yarqusu faraha. Sometimes the heart is going to be dancing in happiness because it recognizes the blessings of the Quran and the blessings of the Prophet Sallallahu Allah alayhi wasallam. Allah reminds us in the Quran, لَقَدْ مَنَّ اللَّهُ عَلَى الْمُؤْمِنِينَ Allah has favored the believers. How has He favored the believers? What is Allah's manna? لَقَدْ مَنَّ اللَّهُ عَلَى الْمُؤْمِنِينَ إِذْ بَعَثَ فِيهِمْ رَسُولًا مِنْ أَنفُسِهِمْ That He has sent a Rasul from amongst them. This is Allah's minna upon you. Allah's favor upon you. Allah's blessings upon you. That He has sent you a Prophet. And that Prophet recites the book of Allah purifies them, calls them to the wisdom and the book of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. In Surah Al-Jumu'ah, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala reminds us, He is the one who has sent from the Ummi people a messenger from amongst them who recites the book to them and purifies them and teaches them the book and the wisdom. Then Allah says in the very next verse, This is the blessing of Allah. The blessing, the fadl of Allah. What is the blessing of Allah that you have a prophet sent amongst you? Allah has given you fadl. Allah has honored you. Allah has bestowed upon you a blessing that you need to understand. And what is that blessing? You have a prophet. You have a rasul. You have a nabi. And not just any prophet and rasul and nabi. The best of all prophets and the imam of all the anbiya and the sayyid or the leader of all of the children of Adam. Dear Muslims, we are preferred and blessed by Allah. And this is a preference that is general. We have to, we have to earn that blessing to, to strive to get there but a generic blessing we all have that we are from the best ummah that Allah Azza wa Jal has created not because of me not because of you because of our Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam this ummah is the best ummah because we have the best book and we have the best Nabi and we have the best Rasul our Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam said Ana Sayyidu Waladi Adama Yawm Al Qiyamah I shall be the single leader of all of mankind on the day of judgment Wala Fakhr, and I'm not boasting. La hawla wa billah. He he said this so that no evil person thinks that he's boasting. I have to tell you this fact. I'm not boasting. I'm not bragging. I shall be the leader of all of the children of Adam. In another hadith, he said, I shall be carrying the flag of praise, liwa alhamd, and all of mankind shall be under my banner. He is carrying the flag of praise, and he is the praiseworthy one. He is carrying liwa alhamd, and he is Ahmed and Muhammad. Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. Allah Azza wa Jal reminds us in the Quran, who is the messenger of Allah? What was his function and purpose? وَمَا أَرْسَلْنَاكَ إِلَّا رَحْمَةً لِلْعَالَمِينَ Ya Rasulullah, you are the rahmah for all of mankind. You, your personality, your message, your teachings, your risala, your life, your times, your sunnah, your seerah, you, Ya Rasulullah, are the rahmah for all of mankind. And this is what our Prophet ﷺ said in the authentic hadith in the Mustadrak of Al-Hakim. He said, أَيُّهَا النَّاسِ إِنَّمَا أَنَا رَحْمَةٌ مُهْدَى O mankind, I am Allah's rahmah he has gifted to mankind rahmatun muhda it is a hadiyah Allah has gifted us the rahmah with the life of the prophet sallallahu alayhi wasallam subhanallah you cannot be a believer until you believe in the risala before you believe in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala think about it how do you know who Allah is how do you know who 
Allah is. How do you know the kalima? Until you believe in Muhammad وسلم, who taught you the kalima. And that's why when Ja'far, the cousin of the Prophet وسلم, was speaking to Najashi, and Najashi said, what is this new message? Ja'far radiallahu an said that, O oh king, O oh mighty king, we were a people steeped in evil and steeped in paganism and steeped in ignorance. The strong would devour the weak. We would do this and that and kill and we would eat dead meat and whatnot until, what did he say? Allah sent us a messenger. The sending of the messenger is when the blessings began. Allah sent us a messenger whom we knew, we loved, we respected. The messenger taught us. The messenger, this is where everything changes. The coming of the Risala Muhammadiyya Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. That is where everything changes. Brothers and sisters, it is a part of Iman to love the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam and to rejoice at his sending and to be happy that we are a part of his ummah. We all know that the Sahaba, they took comfort in the physical presence of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. They took joy in gazing upon him. When things became tough, when things were depressing and sad, they would simply sit in the company of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam to cheer themselves up. This is the reality, the love that they had for the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. It is a love that has not been compared and has not been replicated in any other leader amongst man. Mankind. It is a love that is genuine. It is a love that Allah gives to the believers. And this is why we hear such amazing stories. In the battle of Uhud, when disaster struck to the Muslims and the people of Medina heard that over 70 people have been killed. They became flustered, they became worried and groups came to meet the, the, the people returning from Uhud. Amongst them was a lady. She was on the path from Uhud to Medina and she said, where is the messenger of Allah? Is he okay? Somebody said to her, oh lady, your father has passed away. Inna lillahi wa inna rajiun. How is the messenger of Allah? Another man came by. Oh lady, I saw your brother. He's amongst the deceased. Inna lillahi wa inna rajiun. Tell me how is the messenger of Allah? She's waiting to hear the news till finally somebody says, Oh lady, your husband himself has died. And she says, Inna lillahi wa inna rajiun. How is the messenger of Allah? Tell me how is Rasulullah? She's lost her father, her brother, her husband, and her main concern is the messenger of Allah. Till finally somebody says, The Prophet is fine, scrapes and bruises, he is fine. Let me see him. Finally, she was brought in front of him. When she saw the Prophet is alive, wounded, bleeding, alive. She said, Alhamdulillah, every musibah after you, I can bear it. I can bear the calamity. Every musibah after you, Ya Rasulullah, I can, I can deal with it. If I had lost you, I don't know what I would do. This is the iman of the Sahabiyya. She had lost three of her family members, but her iman was so strong. Ya Rasulullah, as long as you're here, I'll be able to deal with this reality. This is the reality of what mahabba and what love is for the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. Look at the famous nasheed we teach our children. The most famous nasheed of our seerah, Tala al -Bad it was said when the Prophet ﷺ returned from Tabuk, it was a dangerous expedition. In the July months, they marched all the way to Tabuk, almost 1,000 you know, kilometers away. And then they marched back in the heat of the summer. It was a very dangerous expedition. They thought they would meet the Romans. When they came back, the people of Medina came outside of the city and they sang these famous phrases that we all know. The full, the full moon has come upon us. The full moon has come upon us. From the hill of Wada. This was a hill that they would come back to, to uh, in the Tabuk direction. There was a hill there called Thaniyatul Wada. So from Thaniyatul Wada, the full moon has risen up. Then they said, Wajaba shukru alayna. We must be so grateful. We must show shukr. Ma da'a lillahi da'a. As long as this Prophet is calling to Allah amongst us. They understood the coming of the Prophet meant they have to be thankful. They have to show shukr. Wajaba shukru alayna. Ma da'a lillahi da'a. In fact, the Sahaba loved the Prophet's company so much that the realization that they would be separated from him would bring them anxiety. It is authentically narrated that a man came to the Prophet in the masjid. Everybody was there and he said, Ya Rasulallah, you are the most beloved person to me. I love you, Wallahi, more than I love myself, more than I love my spouse and my children. And any time that I'm grief struck, I come to you and until I can see you and I feel a sense of relief. 
But then, Ya Rasulullah, one day I realized I shall die and you shall die. And when you die, Ya Rasulullah, you will be risen high up with the prophets. And when I die, I will not be at your level, Ya Rasulullah. This caused me grief. This caused me sadness. Can you imagine how this person is thinking so much time ahead? Can you imagine he's a Sahabi? He sees the Prophet every day. Separation anxiety comes after death and he's thinking about it now. The Prophet was silent, did not say anything. A few days later, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala revealed Surah An-Nisa verse 69. Those who believe and do good deeds, they shall be in the company of those whom Allah has blessed. They shall be with the Prophets and with the Siddiqeen and with the righteous and with the, and with the martyrs and what a great companionship they are. And he said to the man that you shall be with those whom you love. If you truly love me, you shall be with me. Anas ibn Malik was there. He was a child at the time, barely 10 years old. Look at the Iman of Anas ibn Malik as a 10 year old child. What did Anas ibn Malik say فَوَاللَّهِ مَا فَرِحْنَا فَرْحَةً أَشَدُّ مِنْ هَذِهِ الْفَرْحَةً Wallahi, that day when the Prophet said that you will be with those whom you love, we were never happier in our lives since the day we accepted Islam. Till that day when he said, you shall be with those whom you love. Because Anas ibn Malik said, I do not have the level of Abu Bakr and Umar. I do not have the level of the prophets, but I love them. So I hope to be amongst them. This is what you call love. This is what you call happiness. Anas is saying, we were not happier any day of our lives since accepting Islam than the day we found out. You shall be with those whom you are going to be with. You love, you're going to be with them. Subhanallah, brothers and sisters. As I said, a sign of Iman, a sign of faith in Allah is to be happy at the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. To be happy that we are of his ummah. To be happy that we have access to his seerah. We have access to his sunnah. The famous Hassan al-Basri, the greatest scholar of Basra, the greatest student of the Tabi'un of Basra. You all know the famous incident when the Prophet ﷺ changed the mimbars and he would give a khutbah on a stump of the palm tree. Then an Ansari lady who was wealthy, she had a, uh, she had a, a, a person who could build you know, a, a better mimbars. So the person built a special custom-made mimbar. You all know the story. The Prophet ﷺ stood on the custom-made mimbar and Allah allowed the stump to cry. And the Sahaba said, we heard this tree weeping like a baby camel. Allah allowed, the emotions were there, we cannot hear it. Allah allowed the Sahaba to hear the crying of the stump of the tree because the Prophet had left the stump and moved on to the new location. So the Prophet stopped the khutbah, interrupted the khutbah, came down and hugged the stump, calmed the stump down, and then ordered that the stump be taken and buried under his mimbar where it is to this day. That I'm still standing on you, O stump. Hassan al Basri would na narrate this incident and he would begin to cry. And he would say, O oh people, is it not more befitting that we cry than a tree? O oh people, should we not cry more than a tree out of ishtiyaq, out of desire to be with the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam? And every time he would mention this, he would begin to cry. Dear brothers and sisters, today's khutbah was about the reality of being happy at the sunnah and the seerah and the life and times of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. A desire to be with him. The reality of iman means that we need to appreciate who this man was and that we are of his ummah and true love is shown not just by saying i love you ya rasulullah not just not just by mentioning that love but to study his teachings a commitment to study who was this man a commitment to live one's life in accordance with the life of the prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam verbal expressions of love and outer happiness is good and it is an act of worship and Allah shall bless us when we say we love you Ya Rasulullah. That is good, but that's not the goal. To say we love you is the wasila, not the ghaya, not the end. It's the, it's the way to get to the end. What is the end? What is the actual goal? Is it just to say we love you Ya Rasulullah? No. To say we love you and to show love is the wasila, is the means. What is the ghaya? What is the goal? Allah says in the Quran, قُلْ إِن كُنْتُمْ تُحِبُّونَ اللَّهَ فَاتَّبِعُونِي يُحْبِبْكُمُ اللَّهِ If you truly say you love Allah, then follow me. The Prophet is saying, follow me. 
Allah Azza wa Jal will love you. The ultimate goal in showing love and expressing love is not just to show and express love. It is to make our lives in accordance with the lives of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. To model our own akhlaq with the akhlaq of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. And to take our Nabi and his Sunnah and his Seerah as the ultimate and only role model for us to follow. Anas bin Malik radiallahu ta'ala and who commented and he said, the day the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam entered Medina was the happiest day of our lives. And the day that he passed away and we buried him, it was the saddest day of our lives. To be happy at the Prophet is a sign of Iman. To be sad that he's not amongst us is a sign of Iman. So every day we study the seerah. Every day we learn more about him. And every day should be the happiest day when we study about our Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. May Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala bless me and you with and through the Quran. And may he make us of those who his verses they understand and apply his halal and haram throughout our lifespan. I ask Allah's forgiveness. You as well ask him for he is the Ghafoor and the Rahman. Alhamdulillah, all praise is due to Allah, the one and the unique. He it is whom we worship, and it is His aid that we seek. He is the Lord of the oppressed, and He hears the prayer of the weak. As to what follows, dear Muslims, of the issues that we see annually, online, and amongst our family and friends during this time every single year, is the contentious issue of the mawlid, and whether we should celebrate or not celebrate the mawlid. This khutbah is not the time to go into academic detail. I have given lectures and written articles about this. And I refer you to a long lecture I gave online a few years ago called The Reality of Bid'ah. You can find it on my YouTube page. So I have spoken in academic detail about this. Today's khutbah is a brief reminder, dear Muslims. Point number one. Three points. Point number one. Whatever position you hold, whether one should or should not celebrate, Please understand and acknowledge that the other position, the one that you don't hold, is a reputable mainstream position held by icons of respect and scholars that are worthy of our admiration throughout Islamic history. And the average person is not required to perform ijtihad. The average person chooses a group of scholars and follows them. So if you have chosen one group, no problem. Allow another group of Muslims to choose another group. If you believe that Imam Ibn Hajar and Anawi are the better scholars, no problem. Understand the other group has chosen Ibn Taymiyyah and Ash-Shatibi and others. Realize that this difference of opinion is one that goes back not 100, not 500, almost 800 years. And one finds great ulama, respected ulama, reputable ulama on both sides of the equation. Subhanallah, brothers and sisters, if you have chosen one side, I ask you by Allah, if the scholar of the other side, if you have chosen Ibn Taymiyyah's side, if Ibn Hajar appeared in front of you now, would you treat him harshly? Would you say this person is evil or whatnot? Or would you understand, well, that's Ibn Hajar's opinion, I have to respect it even if I don't agree with it. Every one of these schools, every one of these strands has its methodology and its reasons and its what we call hermeneutics or usul. How does it extract that it is allowed or not allowed? And each one of them understands that they're following different philosophies. So those that say that mawlid should not be done, they have an understanding of what is innovation. And they say, if the Prophet ﷺ didn't do it, and the Sahaba didn't do it, we should not do it. And that is a valid and a sensical and a, and a sensible and a logical extrapolation. Those who say there's nothing wrong with remembering the Prophet ﷺ in this time frame, they have a different understanding of what is bid'ah. And they say, you are correct, the general rule, we don't do what the Prophet ﷺ did, but there are exceptions. Now is not the time to get into them. For example, Abu Bakr al-Siddiq and Uthman compiled the Mus'haf. This is an exception. There's a reason they're doing it. For example, Salat al-Taraweeh. We finish the whole Quran during Salat al-Taraweeh. The Prophet did not do that. The Sahaba did not do that. For example, Dua khatm quran within Taraweeh. Nobody did that from the first generation. But we do it. The Ummah has accepted it. And they have their understandings. For example, Bilal radiallahu an, when the Prophet asked him, how did, you, how did I hear your footsteps in Jannah? Bilal said, Ya Rasulullah, every time I do wudu, I pray two raka'ah. The Prophet said, that's why you're entering Jannah. He did not learn 
that you should pray two rak'ah from the Prophet ﷺ. But what's wrong with praying two rak'ah? Nothing. So one Bilal is saying, every time I do wudu, I'm going to pray two rak'ah. Other scholars, Ibn Hajar and Nawi, they say, if you do a generic good deed at any time of the year, then it is permissible. And if you come together and you praise the Prophet ﷺ without going to extremes, and you give you know, good nasheeds, and you talk about the fadal of the Prophet ﷺ, why should that be wrong? So this group has its understanding. This group has its understanding. SubhanAllah, brothers and sisters, point is not to get technical but to understand that the other side it's not coming out of thin air it's not just following their desires they have solid epistemology they have solid what we call usul and if you've chosen to follow one group understand the other school has its group and its scholars this is point number one point number two before you jump to the differences please look at the commonalities before you get irritated at how you differ look at where you agree 99.99 percent you agree with your brother that 0.01 percent you make such a big deal and subhanallah where is each of these actions coming from? Never forget those who celebrate the mawlid and those who don't celebrate the mawlid. The both of them, their niyyah is to love the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. The both of them, they're, they're differing. How should we show love? That's it. But the niyyah is exactly the same. The asl or the root, I want to love the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa The one group says, I'm going to love him by doing exactly what he did verbatim. And so I'm not going to do this thing called the mawlid. The niyyah is love. The other group says, I'm going to love him. And this is a way of showing love. The niyyah is the love. How can you ignore this commonality? The reason why both groups are doing what they're doing, the cause is the same. The niyyah is the same. The qalb is the same. So how can you ignore this? And Allah Azza wa Jal tells us, إِنَّمَا الْعَمَالُ بِالنِّيَّاتِ The Prophet ﷺ said, actions are judged by intentions. And dear Muslims, great ulama understood this. The greatest of ulama of one side of the spectrum, Shaykh al-Islam ibn Taymiyyah. He wrote in his Iqtidar Salat al-Mustaqeem, and I'm literally quoting you from his book so that we understand. Volume 2, page 123. He said that... He himself said, to take this day as a day of celebration, he said, this is a bid'ah, I don't agree with it. That's Ibn Taymiyyah. None of the Salaf and none of the Ahl al-Bayt would do so, that they would take this day as a day of celebration. For celebrations, according to Ibn Taymiyyah, must come from the Sharia. Then he said, whoever does this, mahabbatan lin Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, wa ta'zeeman lahu, wallahu qad yuthibuhum ala hadhihi al-mahabba wal-ijtihad la ala al-bid'ah. Whoever does this, out of mahabba for the Prophet ﷺ, and thinking that this is the right thing to do, Allah shall reward them for that love. And Allah shall reward them for that sincere effort. Not because they did something they shouldn't do, but because of the good niyyah. And Ibn Taymiyyah goes on and he says on the next page, listen to this. This is Ibn Taymiyyah saying this. Ibn Taymiyyah who says, I don't agree with this, it should not be done. Ibn Taymiyyah says, if you take the mawlid as a day of festival and you think that the Prophet ﷺ, that is going to be something that uh, will bring you closer to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, he doesn't agree with it. Then he says, but whoever does it thinking that it is good, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will potentially and possibly reward him ajrun azim, a massive reward for his good intention because he wanted to show respect to the messenger of Allah. This is what you call a scholar of Islam. This is what you call an alim rabbani. I don't think it's right, but I'm not so stubborn and arrogant that I think the one who does it is an evil person going to Jahannam. This is what you call an alim. He understood that, you know what? I understand you're doing it out of love, I don't agree with it, but if you are sincere and you're following a group of ulama, Allah shall reward you for your sincerity. This is the real alim rabbani, the second point. Before you jump to what is different, look at what is common. And the third point, brothers and sisters, no matter how you feel about the mawlid, no matter how passionate you are for or against, please look at the broader picture. Now is not the time to spread hatred amongst other groups of practicing Muslims. Now is not the time to increase our disunity and to teach our children about the wrongdoings of another group of Muslims. Their masjid is five, ten minutes away. They're coming and praying five times a day. We live in a land of kufr. We live in a land of atheism. We live in a land of ilhad. Already the Muslims are few. The ones that are practicing are even fewer. And subhanallah, what are we doing? Fulan is wrong, fulan is dal, fulan is bundil. Subhanallah, whatever your opinion is, 
Dear Muslims, look at the real world around you and don't allow these 0.01 differences to allow you to break division in the Ummah. Wallahi, to create division over these issues is a bigger sin than whatever you think the sin of the other group might be. To create division and to splinter up over these issues that you find great ulama on both sides, it shows that you don't have the maturity of the ulama of those sides. Follow whatever position you want, respectfully disagree, don't make this an issue of of division dear Muslim bottom line is as follows no matter what your disagreements might be with your brother in Islam in your heart how can you hate somebody who loves the messenger of Allah think about it how can you hate somebody and preach hatred and preach disunity against your fellow Muslim brother or sister who is doing whatever he or she is doing simply because they want to show love to the Messenger of Allah. And this is advice to both sides, brothers and sisters, both sides. Those that celebrate, those that don't celebrate. Do not make fun of the other camp. Wallahi, stop this. Do not put them down. Do not be sarcastic. Do not create division. Choose your group of scholars. Choose your methodology and let the others do what they're doing. We have far are bigger issues to deal with and if you must discuss if you really must then choose the right audience don't choose the average Muslims who are not even praying five times a day choose the right audience and the right language and the right time and the right place and bring up academic discussion between the two no problem but don't cause a bigger issue because of what is a relatively trivial one be wise brothers and sisters be wise and realize the one who loves the messenger of Allah Allah is not gonna punish him because he made a mistake in how that love is expressed or not expressed these are good people wanting to love the messenger of Allah don't hate those who are loving the messenger of Allah if you must choose the right time and place and audience and language and then have an academic discussion otherwise the default is subhanallah just like you're following one group they're following the other group live and let live and allow this diversity it's been around for a thousand years you're not going to change it brothers and sisters so live and let live and ask Allah to guide all of us to that which is the most uh, truthful and beloved to him and realize what unites us in loving the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam is far more than what disunites us. Allahumma inni da'in fa'aminu. Allahumma la tad'a fi nawmi dhamman illa ghafarta. Wala hamman illa farrajta. Wala daynan illa qadayta. Wala maridan illa shafayta. Wala asiran illa yassarta. اللهم اغفر لنا ولإخواننا الذين سبقونا بالإيمان ولا تجعل في قلوبنا غلا للذين آمنوا ربنا إنك رؤوف رحيم اللهم أعز الإسلام والمسلمين اللهم أعز الإسلام والمسلمين اللهم من أرادنا أو أراد الإسلام والمسلمين بالسوء فاشغله بنفسه واجعل تدميره في تدبيره يا قوي يا عزيز عباد الله إن الله تعالى أمركم بأمر بدأ به بنفسه وثنى بملائكة قدسه وث ثلث بكم أيها المؤمنون من جنه وإنسه فقال عز من قائل عليما إن الله وملائكته يصلون على النبي يا أيها الذين آمنوا صلوا عليه وسلموا تسليما اللهم صل وسلم وبارك وأنعم على عبدك رسولك محمد وعلى آله وصحبه أجمعين عباد الله إن الله تعالى يأمر بالعدل والإحسان وإيتاء ذي القربى وينهى عن الفحشاء والمنكر والبغي يعيدكم لعلكم تذكرون أذكروا الله العظيم يذكركم واشكروه يزد لكم ولذكر الله تعالى أكبر وأقم الصلاة فيا ذلي ويا خجلي إذا ما قال لي ربي أما استحييته تعصيني ولا تخشى من العتب وتخفي الذنب عن خلقي وتأبى في الهوى قربي فتب مما جنيت عسى تعود إلى 